Welcome to the K2 Sales Podcast. I'm your host, Karen Kelly. Every week, I'll be sitting down with a sales executive where they'll share their stories and experiences that produce game-changing results. Let's be honest, sales can be a tough game. I'm sure at some point, we've all delivered a less than stellar demo, been ghosted by a client or two, and sometimes, maybe we did more talking than listening. And that's where I can help. The stories and insights our guests share can be applied to your own business, your territory, or with your team, so you're not reinventing the wheel. Our weekly tactics and strategies help you get out of your head and start creating your own path towards game-changing results. Welcome back to the K2 Sales Podcast. I'm your host, Karen Kelly. The goal of the show is to share game-changing stories that our guests are experiencing with themselves, their team, or what they're seeing in the industry. Now, working remotely has forced many B2B sales professionals to really tune into LinkedIn, whether it's to build their brand, create a following, or become an influencer in their industry. Now, some are playing the long game, and they're doing it well. And sadly, others are looking for the quick wins, and they're failing miserably. So to help us understand what we should and shouldn't be doing, and really how we can stand out for the right reasons on LinkedIn, I'm excited to be speaking with Mark Halper today. Mark is ranked 11th amongst LinkedIn coaches and trainers as of January 2021. He's a two-time book author, multipreneur, and CEO of Connect to Collaborate. Mark, welcome to the podcast. Thanks so much for having me, Karen. I really appreciate this. So, Mark, I think it's it's important to share with the audience how you and I met because it really does tie in what we're going to talk about today and really the why and how we can incorporate that into uh, into LinkedIn to really help engage with our audience. So, you know, I'm just going to bring us back to, I'm going to say it was almost a year ago. I actually don't even know how long it was. Maybe it wasn't a year. <laughs> this is pandemic brain. <laughs> But Mark and I had signed up for Simon Sinek's Know Your Why online course. And so this was a course where it was virtually taught. And then we were breaking into breakout rooms where the, the, the unique part about it was you were randomly paired with a partner and you shared a story, a story, a recent story that, you know, something, an experience, a positive experience. And your partner was listening for, you know, separating feelings from facts, looking for patterns and they, at the end of the conversation, were going to write your why statement for you. So it was really to, you know, validate if you were in line with what it is. So randomly, Mark and I were partnered up in, in a Zoom breakout room. So imagine, you know, not knowing anybody and then just, you know, getting in front of someone you've never met and going, okay, go. You know, you have to talk about trust and like letting go and being vulnerable. That was a a big thing, but I, I think it was very serendipitous that you and I met and, and that we got partnered up because, you know, the way you shared my why was very in line with what, what I thought, but I just think when I heard what you do for a living, and this is, you know, as a LinkedIn trainer and coach, you help others, you know, tell their why to really engage others in LinkedIn. So I thought, wow, I hit the jackpot with getting this partner. <laughs> <laughs> I hit the jackpot back. Come on. <laughs> but anyway, it just, it was, for me, what, what was so important about it is it's someone um, of your status and what you do for a living, but yet you found it important to go back and take the course again and really redefine your why and, and ensure that it still is in, in alignment with what you're doing today. So maybe walk us through a little bit about, you know, what you do today, um, about how you work with business professionals to help them tell their why on LinkedIn, and maybe also the importance of taking courses like what we did to really ensure that your, li your why is still relevant and that you still are leading in purpose. Well, I absolutely believe that you never stop learning, ever, ever. Even if you master a topic, there's always something new you need to be learning about. And you're not just going to learn it by yourself. You're going to learn it when you rub off on other people. So at, when I left the course that you and I met, I knew that, and I'm not saying this because you're podcasting right now with me. I knew that there was a connection and we were going to keep it going. And what happened right after we got back from the course? We both emailed each other. We both connected on LinkedIn. We kept it going. And then we kept sharing material with each other to help each other learn. And what that means is that the sharing is reinforced by what I share with you, you share back with me, but you appreciate it. You see the value of it. And my goodness, if we're not able to do that now in a pandemic with the really close 
entourage of people that we really nurture, then we're going to really be in trouble because we're going to come out of this one day. And if you're not marketing yourself like crazy right now, surrounding yourself with really amazing people, when we come out of this, you're going to be sucking wind. You're going to wish you had back in March of 2021 done all this stuff because in September, when, which is I think when we're saying that the, everything's going to bust open, you've had six months to market yourself. I've had a year and six months to market myself and marketing, as I call it, my butt off. And I've written blog posts about this. I lecture about this. You have to know who you are. If you don't know your why, you can't go farther. When you're stuck, it gets worse. So I'm all about people who are stuck. They're stuck for a reason. They were raised and told, sit in the back of the class, don't cut up, don't talk. And if you look at all my report cards as a little kid, Mark talks too much. Mark should listen more. Mark should sit in the back of the class and be quiet. Sorry, that's not in my DNA. My parents didn't do that. I don't do that. I needed to get out of the corporate world where I started, out of the prim and proper banking and then finance. It wasn't me. So I found my avenue out. I took that avenue and I never stopped going. It's almost 20 years now that I've been out of corporate. So for me, I had to develop why me. I was just another person out there and I had to learn, go deep inside and learn why. And then I found, somebody said, you've got to read that book. Start with why. Start with why by Simon Sinek. And if you don't understand this book, you're never going to get anywhere. You can't sell yourself. You can't sell your product or your service. You can't help others to sell themselves by referral. I'm all about referral. I'm all about people referring to me. And I'm all about giving them back more than they refer to me. And it's not equal. It's never going to be equal. It can't ever be an exact exchange. It's always going to be you give more than you get. I've always believed that. I've lived around that in my entrepreneurial experience that way. So, folks, if you haven't read the book, and I get we get nothing for this except the luck that we had together by meeting in this class sponsored by the Cynic people, read the book. If you don't have time to read the book, watch the YouTube. Start with why. I mean, it's going to be the best 18 minutes you've ever spent watching the YouTube. Then dig deep. You got to let it bubble out. You got to make it come from the heart. And before we started recording, you and I were talking about a lot of how we market ourselves and a lot of how we sell and want to be bought from is not only intellectual, it's emotional on top of that. So if you were just reading the words on paper that I'm giving right now, you won't get the intonation. You won't get the passion. You won't get the verve. You won't get where I'm trying to take you. So you have to marry the two together and you have to decide what works best for you. So I've learned to write. That's an it's a, it's a learned habit. You have to write a lot to learn to write, but I always had the passion from a little kid. So these are the things when I found the why, when I found other people to surround myself that get the why, then I'm in great company and it can't ever get better than that. Wow. So much there, Mark. I don't even know where to, to begin, but it, it, it sounds <laughs> like it's more of a philosophy of life and, and that we're applying a part of it to business because, you know, when you think about giving and giving more than you want to receive, like that should be just you know, you can't be that way in sales or in business and not that way in life. That's that's an innate ability or an innate attribute. Um, and, and it also, I unpeeled there that, you know, the law of reciprocity. And just like what you said of how you and I, when we initially met, but yet we both maintain that connection. We both value the partnership by sharing. And I think that's kind of in essence what we should be doing on LinkedIn is that, you know, you're leading from respect. You're understanding a little bit about what they're interested in, but you're giving. You're giving with the intent of not receiving. Okay. And I let me yeah. let me let me just start on the profile, on the LinkedIn profile, because everything starts there. If this is not copy paste your resume, your resume is backward looking. Your LinkedIn profile is this is where I came from, who makes me who I am today. This is where I seek to go, and this is where I'm heading myself. And you have to talk pre pa past, present, future at the same time as you're using I as the pronoun in everything you say and a power verb 
in the rest of the sentence and finish it up as if you're giving a presentation to the board of directors because your board of directors is your clientele. And they may have bought from you service or product, but they can't feel good about referring you unless you can make them want to refer you and feel comfortable that by referring you, a somebody at 30,000 foot view is reading your profile and says, I get what this person is suggesting. I want to talk to that person. So you have to make them want to contact you. You have to give them a reason. If you just plop down and your resume and hope that it's going to happen, you're going to tell me there's no ROI in LinkedIn. And I'll agree with you. But if you work it and you keep improving it and you keep tweaking it and we're all changing all the time, think of where we were six months ago in the pandemic and where we are right now. We're beginning to see where we'll be in six more months. Past, present, future. Indicate where you're headed. People want to grab your coattails and ride with you. You've gone to meetings, you've gone to uh, chamber of commerce sessions and you get stuck with a, with a cocktail in your hand and some boring as hell person talking to you and you can't get away fast enough. And you see a whole bunch of people over there in a corner having a lively conversation. You want to be part of that conversation. You want to be the middle of that conversation. You want to know what they've got. That's what you want to be on LinkedIn. Not the boring person, but the mover, the shaker, the person you want to follow along with. Followers, followers are one thing. Leaders know also when to follow because you can't always be a leader all the time. You have to help others lead along with you and delegate that very onerous responsibility uh, to others to nurture them along, to encourage them to do their occupation better. If it's sales, if it's a LinkedIn coach, if it's a teacher, whatever it is. So you have to really want to give from the core of yourself the why you do what you do to encourage others so they'll want to refer you. And look, that's what sales is all about. When you said, you know, when to be a leader and when to help others, that, that truly is knowing your purpose. But I feel that your purpose is to be in service of others. And I think just stepping back to allow others, you know, in the right time to allow others to shine in, in, in the right environment is, is very powerful. But it, it seems to me that that doesn't happen that often because everyone's fighting for the limelight. Well, yeah, we all are. We all want to be successful. You can be successful by helping others be successful because what goes around comes around and it's better to give than receive. And when you help somebody, you refer them and they get a piece of business they feel duty bound to help you back. You don't ask for it. You don't remind them. I've had so many people do that. Hey, Mark, I gave you a lead and it turned into something. When are you going to come give me lunch or something like that? Right. You are out of my world. I just don't work that way. It's never 5149, but I always try to give more than I get. get. And if it's 55, whatever, 45, fine. If it's 60, 40, fine. It's going to equal out in the end. I have business friends for 20 years that I've been in business. I have business friends before I've been in business for myself that we still nurture each other. It all works together. And any, it, yeah, it's my why. It's my, there's a Japanese philosophy for it called Ikigai. And if you're not familiar with it, I recommend it to everybody. I-K-I-G-A-I. And okay, shameless plug. It's a appendix in my upcoming book. I have a second edition of my book, LinkedIn for Law and Professional Practices. And it's, I get a lot of people, a lot of professionals, sales professionals, marketing professionals, lawyers, doctors, you name it. People who are taught not to talk about themselves from a very young age, but they have something that they need to say, but it's been so stuffed down our throats, we don't know how to say it. The concept of Ikigai allows you, using concentric circles, look it up, it's absolutely amazing, to get to the core, the really the middle of why I do what I do. And between that and Simon Sinek and the way I was raised and the way many of us were raised, and the way we like to be thought about, this becomes why people are attracted to you, to be that corner group of people having a great, deep conversation. I think when you think about that, it, I just look at the sweet spot in the middle. And I think when you initially said about, you know, 
people maybe from a young age being told they can't do this and some limiting beliefs. I feel that if you can tap into that concentric circle in the middle of it and know your purpose, that dispels, that starts to dispel everything. All these, you know, things of why I can't do these things. When you get clarity of why you do these things and what you're passionate about, I think you just start almost reemerging as this new person. And there's, there's a sense of confidence of I can do this. And you are in that net. You're the leader in that networking room. All of a sudden, you're not at the boring group. You're at the group that everybody wants to be around because you have such a sense of conviction of who I am. And that's powerful. It really is. You're exactly right. I, I have a very recent LinkedIn coaching client, uh, former vice chairman of a big corporation, retired, wants to stay active, wants to be a consultant to other corporations. Wonderful, noble, excellent idea. He's been 38 years at the same corporation. He is a lifer, as I call it. He has only been in that corporation. So he has a watershed event coming up. And that is, he's going to be out on his own with no purpose. And he needs to develop his ikigai, his why, to develop what his new purpose for life will be. And that is how he can give the benefit of his past experience to people who need it with the outer layer of letting him grow into new experiences. He's scared to death. I don't blame him. But after I finished working with him, he had it all together. We put his profile together. He had examples. I said to him, well, tell me about what what's some of your best accomplishments? What do people talk about and say about you when you walk into a room that you don't, you'll never hear? What do they say about you when you've left a room that you'll never hear? You know, like, all these questions. And he's saying, wow, I've never had to think about this because I never had to think outside the corporation. Really fascinating that he is so successful now on his own very vulnerable in a brand new world, has to really dig deep. So it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how successful or not successful you are. It doesn't matter what where you came from. It doesn't matter any of this. Life changes. We are morphing. We are hurtling through space right now and has change pace that we've never seen before. Sp I guess thrust by the pandemic. We're all moving so fast. The technology is moving us so fast. This is the time to get in touch with why you do what you do. And the best thing about LinkedIn, you tell your why. You go find the people to recommend you. And what they'll do is say, hey, that guy, Mark, he told you why he did something really great with us once. And this is part of his core existence. I'll tell you how well he does his why. So it layers on top of your own existing why. And that's powerful, powerful stuff. I think when you look at LinkedIn and the posts that do generate the most um, likes and, you know, commentaries, are those when people really share vulnerable stories? And yes. this, this is a shift because back, you know, years ago, it was, you know, self-promotion. And now it's like, you know, high profile people, just like you said, getting vulnerable, being afraid, but actually coming through and saying it. And I think that uh, revelation not only helps them, but it shows to others, maybe not in a position as high as theirs, that it's okay to do that. And it's, it's, um, it's welcomed. It's honest. It's human. Look, we're entrepreneurs or we work for other people. We're at their mercy. That's the way of the world, okay? I had bosses. I had exactly one good boss in my entire career, and that was a very long time. And he's my one of my best friends at this point. The rest, forgotten about them. They forgot about me. That's okay. But when I'm in front of a client, it's 110% laser focused on what that client needs. Not what I perceive they need, but what they tell me they need. And it's my job to elicit from them what they need and how I can answer that requirement. And I'm only there because they either read my LinkedIn profile that got me into their office, if we ever go to offices again, or they know what to ask me and how to make it a conversation. So I don't sell my services by email or by letter. I sell by video, vocal intonation, and passion. And some people say, that's so old world. You know what? Good. I'm different than most. And it's a differentiator that makes me successful. 
when others are doing the same old, same old and wondering why they're not succeeding. Have I lost deals? Absolutely. Have I screwed up? Absolutely. I'm honest enough to tell you. I don't know where I'll be in a year. I don't know whether I'll be doing this in a year, but I tell you, I'm having the time of my life talking about it because other people are getting benefit from it. And that makes me feel good. So when you're posting something on LinkedIn, don't just post about your field, your product, your service. That gets really old after a while. Anecdotally relate how something you provided a client or somebody else helped them. We all look for the redemption story in the movie. And we all look for what makes people happy at the end of the story. That's what we want because we've got getting it in the news or in the press or wherever. We need to hear the benefit imparted. So how do you suggest, because I totally agree with you in, in painting that picture, that before and after picture of kind of what your people you help, what they were experiencing before, what that emotional pain was like so that they can see themselves in that story. And then the after, I think a lot of people go to the after too quickly, but if they're not attacking that current state, uh, they're still in denial, right? So what is, you know, can you share a way that someone can do that, whether it's with storytelling, whether it's with, you know, highlighting or their sense of awareness of what, what they're doing today, or is there any kind of tips or techniques that would help uh, expose that? Well, the stories are huge because they're the oldest way of imparting information. I mean, through prehistoric times. And those are the most memorable ways of imparting information. So you can impart data around a story. It will always be remembered. So that's the first thing. I don't have to tell you that the, or your listeners, the stories are important. But what you can do, what I had a lot of success for myself and my clients, is as you're reading in the press, or as you're reading the industrial press that is in your industry, or you're reading in Inc. Magazine or Fortune Magazine, whatever you're reading online, relate what you're reading to a story about yourself or about a client who benefited in a oblique way. Make it tie to reality. Now, look, I've written lots of articles in magazines. I don't know why people like them sometimes, but the editor liked them. Now, that's probably a little too honest for a lot of people, but a lot of this is pleasing the editor. But when I can pull it into my own words, into my own situation, or someone else has written that, then I can say, I've seen this happen. I just saw it happen with me last week and paint the story. Don't name the names. Give the general information enough to make them interested to see that I am curating material I have seen is valuable for my client. I want you too to have the benefit of that access. People cling to that because you're giving them a piece of yourself that they would not normally get unless you allowed it to happen. So am I stuck? Absolutely not stuck. You hear me going on and on because I have so many stories of things that happen. The longer you're in business, the more stories you have about successes that people helped or you helped others gain. It's finding the reference in something that everyone can read and making it relatable to the individual reader. Those are the ones that go crazy. Virally. Virally is a horrible word these days, but that's what we call it. It's viral. I think the relatability is key. And I, and I totally agree with the storytelling because you're right. It's memorable and you can build data around it, right? Versus just a hard pitch. If you build it into the story, you capture that emotion. Well, you know, there is a finesse. This is the art and science of sales. And to kind of, you know, do it in a way that it's tact, tactfully done. I think some people start telling a story and then they cut a hard left into a value proposition and the, the other person feels that I'm being sold here. So I yeah. feel that there, there's some practice here. And just like you said, that authenticity piece that like I'm giving now, I am truly sharing a story of how I helped others. If in fact it relates to you, I'm happy to talk. And maybe that's not from six to 12 months down the road, but you know, I'm, I'm here full stop. And I think there's a difference there and in, in sharing with kind of, no expectations and detaching from the outcome versus sharing and then kind of a hard left into a pitch. Well, inventory your stories and inventory how to get to the posts you put on LinkedIn or wherever you put them, Facebook, Twitter, whatever you do. Be 
be knowledgeable about how to get to them. So when you need that story six months from now, you pluck it out and you put it to that person. You show that person, well, you, you maybe didn't know me six months ago, but I had a situation very similar to this, exactly what you're talking about. But let me relate that to you. Well, no, what have you told them? A, you care. B, you've had experience. And C, you can help them through your knowledge base. That's a powerful combination. No, I think that's great. And I think just to go back to your earlier statement when you said in the, um, the networking, when you can share the past, present, and future, that kind of ties into that, where it's you're sharing a journey. I've only met you now, but what I shared you know, six months ago that may be relevant for you, it shows you're moving with the time, but you have context as to what they're going through. Yeah. And the stories never really change. The details change. You know, the, the application changes. Uh, that's fine. There's always the central point that has to be made, and that's what they carry away. And when you couch it in a story or you couch it in a recommendation that somebody recommends you for a situation when you did yeoman work that no one else could have done under time constraints, money constraints, or efficiency constraints, then they say, oh, that's pretty cool. And if they just happen to know the recommender or someone they know knows the recommender, it just adds that giant layer to that onion. It just gets so much richer. So it's all about how you package yourself, how you package the people around you, how you package the why you do what you do, and how you're honest and relevant to everything that you touch. It, it's... Is it easy? Uh, uh No way. It's a lot, a lot of work. But the good stuff comes from that. Yeah. And, and the, for me, you know, there's a vulnerability piece there too. And just even asking for, you know, those referrals and, and those testimonials. So knowing that it's hard work, but knowing that the outcome is worth it, well, what do you think people could start doing to really start developing, you know, a sense of understanding so that they can get to that of their why? So that they can start engaging, asking people for referrals, start storytelling or getting their clients to storytell on their behalf. If people are reluctant or kind of fearful of putting themselves out there to do that, is there anything that they can start doing to prepare them to, to get there? Yeah, there really is. And I use the metaphor of a cut stone. You're a cut stone. You have facets of your stone. And these facets all reflect the light inward to the stone. And there are different things that you do in the various jobs or responsibilities you have. Break it down to four or six or eight skills and recommendations of those skills for each stone, each, each facet of the stone. If you know your facets, if you know why you shine, you will be able to build off of that. And when somebody calls you up and says, wow, Karen, that was a great presentation you made. We're ready to rock and roll. Show us where to sign. You sign immediately. And then you later come back to them and say, you know, Bob, I remember that conversation you had with me. That was a great conversation. I really appreciate what you did. Could I ask you, would you memorialize the nice things you said on that phone call for me? And here's my recollection, Bob, of what you said to me. Now, what are you doing? You're giving Bob guidance about what you want him to say in context of what he probably said, okay? He's not going to say anything he doesn't recall saying, but you're jo memory jogging him about the things that really meant something to you, the facets of the stone that you want him to reflect back to you. So on LinkedIn, when you ask him to write your recommendation, you give him the bare bones of what you'd like him to write. And Bob being lazy and busy and attention deficit, Bob's going to write pretty much what you ask him to write. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that easy? So then Bob sends you the recommendation and you either publish it because it's perfect. Is it going to be perfect? Probably not. So you send it back to Bob and you say, Bob, line five, could you just beef it up a little bit? Maybe your recollection is a little different than mine. But And he'll go, you know what? I like you, Kelly. I'll be glad to help you out. So he'll do it. You're not asking everybody to recommend you. You're only asking what I believe to be the top 2% of the people you're connected to that you've done great work with. Because 98% of the people like you, but 2% stark, ravingly love you so much, they'll commit to indelible ink on the internet what they think about you. Only they can change it. Only they can rescind it. But you look like, a, you look amazing 
but everybody feels good about it because everybody can say, oh, I know Bob. If Bob says Karen's great, she's got to be amazing. I got to get a hold of Karen. They might call Bob, say, hey, Bob, tell me a little bit more about the story. Bob has the offside conversation. They're on you like right away. These are the things, these are the twists and, tur and turns you have to think about to finesse your image and to finesse your use of the power tool of LinkedIn. But if you're just going to plop your resume on there and hope that it's going to stick on the wall, it's not going to happen. You're fooling yourself. Think of every way to make this a marketing opportunity for you as a brand. You know the brand you represent as you sell. You're now also selling yourself as a brand as well. Yeah. I love that. I love the testimonial and plan, you know, helping them out a bit, but I would imagine, you know, at some time they're going to share a memory or a strength that you may not have been unaware of, because just like you said before, there's perceived value and I could be doing something that I just think is, you know, standard table stakes, but that really made a difference for them. So I think it's important to get that awareness as to what am I doing that really made a difference that I can really double down on. If, if you're going to write about it, obviously that was, you know, valuable and important to you. I need to know that so that I can do more of it. Yeah, absolutely. We don't see ourselves well. You're exactly right. No. The other thing, Mark, is I, I see how valuable this is, is social proofing and sharing. But what, um, what are your thoughts on getting them to do this on a video versus written? Just to, as you mentioned, go back to get that passion, that intonation, that emotion, that connection. What are your thoughts on that? Well, you can't have video recommendations on LinkedIn. It doesn't work. I wish it would. I imagine it will someday soon, but it hasn't happened yet. I haven't opened that yet. So you can get videos of testimonials, but where people are trained to look for recommendations of testimonials is really in your recommendation section. So I would wait until that actually breaks differently later. Um, if you have somebody who says, I only want to do a testimonial on a video, take it, grab it, put it in your featured section, lead off with that. Use it in your emails. If you want to know a little bit about me, here's my friend or my colleague or my client talking about me. That's fine. Don't ever say no. But right now, there are no video in, uh, recommendations. Okay, perfect. Uh, good to know. So for those people who are in sales, you know, a lot of times I see them highlighting their product or, you know, the specs about their product. And I just think like, what, what's the best way to get your value proposition out there? Because for me, I always think you have to sell the problem. Most people are not in buy, they're in buy mode. Most people are unaware that they have a problem. So what are some techniques to really, instead of just pitching your solution, what can you be sharing that's going to highlight or get them thinking differently that, wow, I actually need to look into this versus just scrolling. Like, how do you stop the scroll? Okay. First of all, you got to realize LinkedIn is a giant search engine at the end of the day. And there are four places on your LinkedIn profile where your search terms are really key. Your headline, right under your name, your about section, your experience section, and to a lesser extent, the skills that you portray. So you absolutely want to be sure that the brand you want to project is reinforced not only in the words you put together, but the keywords that are in those words you put together. So then in a blind search looking for all salespeople in the Toronto area who sell whatever it is, who have more than 10 years experience and went to a certain college and worked at a certain company in their past, it's so granular, it will point to you in the top search results, just like the Google search, right? It's just a much smaller 740 million people on LinkedIn, but it's a lot smaller than Google at the end of the day. So you want to be sure you're using keywords really well. You want to be sure you're really using your words beautifully. It is the art of LinkedIn. It is writing about yourself. And you can write, write, write all day about yourself. At the end of the day, when you finish writing and you've got your profile just about ready to commit to LinkedIn, ask somebody in your entourage of best trusted friends. Probably not your significant other. Somebody who can knows you in business and socially and says, Karen, this is great. This is just you talking about you, but you left out this piece to your earlier point. We don't always see ourselves as we want to be seen. 
So you add that, you tweak it, you twist it just a little bit and recognize that once you live, you put it to LinkedIn and you publish it on LinkedIn, it's immediately available to everybody. There's no web designer to have to commit it to the web, to make typos and all that other stuff. And it's there until you change it. And you better be changing it because every time you morph and we're morphing with and changing it, day to day, minute to minute, without even realizing it, you need to go back and look at your profile and say, does this really still adequately reflect why I do what I do right now? And if it doesn't, it's time to make another change. Now I am con I just changed my LinkedIn profile today. I constantly, and I still don't love it. I'm constantly changing it. It's been 17 years on LinkedIn and I'm still changing it because I'm changing. And I'm really big about content right now. And I got this wonderful quote from somebody unsolicited about the content I put out there. And I put it into my LinkedIn profile because I don't prefer to talk about myself. I'd let, rather have my clients and my readers talk about the value I add because I think it's more powerful. And in so people read that and they say, well, this is what he wants to be known by. And it increases my image and my persona and my, therefore my brand. So I was just before I sat down with you making the last minute changes, a couple of changes to my profile because I realized it got a little petrified. Don't become petrified. So it's an iterative process. I think like most things in sales, we're always morphing, but it sounds a little bit like also as your why changes, you have to re-inject that into those four areas and make sure that it still is aligned with who you are and what problems you solve. Because I think when I see headlines of, you know, maybe the geographical territory that they cover and, you know, President's Club winner, and I just think, well, they don't know what problems you solve. And the problems that you solved 12 months ago are going to be different than the problems you solve today. So to I think point, that timeliness. Is I have salespeople that I work with who have added as skills virtual sales. Because they're keeping up with a change that occurred within the past year. And that's just the beginning of it. They're constantly tweaking and pulling and twisting this thing to show the value that they bring and how they keep up with the current environment. Because if you don't, you're hopelessly behind. Yeah. Now you, you mentioned Mark content and that uh, the quote that someone, someone made about you that you highlighted in your profile. So what can you share with us about content and I guess the importance of creating it or sharing it to really, you know, increase uh, your visibility and be started to be seen as that influencer. How can content help you do that? Content is king. It is absolutely gotta be top quality as frequently as you can add to the global conversation. Does that mean daily? It might. I do multiple times daily. Of course, I'm a LinkedIn nerd and I love LinkedIn. So therefore I use it as my, as my lever. But no matter what you produce, it should be original material that you are adding your perception to maybe somebody other's material. Maybe it's completely original material. So let's kind of break that apart. If you want to add your own commentary on some other article or something else you've read or something you know about, then do that in a post on LinkedIn. But add your commentary there first. Use hashtags, add the link, and push it out there. And if it doesn't get the attraction that you expect it to in a couple of days, start with, in case you missed it, I had a point that I wanted you to know about. I, you might, maybe because of the news or you didn't see it, I think you need to know about it. So what you're doing, you're refocusing people to something they may have missed, okay? If they don't get it the second time, you got to rework it another way if it's that important. If it's truly 100% original thought, write a long form LinkedIn article and talk about what your belief section sectors are. For example, I worked with a guy last week He's a blogger. I'm sorry. He's a podcaster. He says to me, hey, Mark, you're my 365th podcast. I said, wow, you must have learned a lot in 365 podcasts. He said, I have. I said, would you write about it? Well, I never thought about doing that. What should I write? I said, I'm not going to tell you what to write. You know exactly what you've learned, but you got to dig deep and figure out what it is you want to tell other people who are either want to be podcasters, thinking about being podcasters, or not su such successful podcasters. You're talking to your people. Tell them why you're successful. 
So when you see my blo his blog post, the guest blog post tomorrow, and you watch my blog, it's going to be there. So he's blogging about what he's learned. I said, you need to turn that into an article and talk even further because I have a limit to the number of words in the blog. You can go on and on. Add, po add whatever you want. Talk about things. Talk about things no one really understands from your lens and make it go. And I'll tell you one thing about articles. They may sit out there six or nine months and go nowhere, and all of a sudden they pick up fire. And I had a woman send me a message about an article I wrote. It was about a year after I actually published it, and it came to me in Farsi, the language of Iran. And I took it to my friend who speaks Farsi, and he said, wow, Mark, she said something along the lines, this is my recollection, she says, you are saying things that we don't get to see here in my country. Thank you for helping us know that there is a reason to read on LinkedIn. Like, do you know what that did to me? But, you know, it's better. You know what it did for her? So just writing an article, you don't know who your global audience is. But when it hits, and yeah, it's oddballs, weird stuff. But it hit in a really powerful way. So I can relate the story about the fact that it makes me tell my why. It just reinforces the why. I love that. And think about the reach you get. Like LinkedIn, we kind of think about in our own backyards and even the cultural differences and, and the fact that our perspectives may not be shared, but we may get them to think differently or embrace a different way of, of life or thinking just by your article. I mean, that's that's very touching. Don't discount the number of people who read your posts either. You don't know who reads your posts. You don't know, you know who shares your posts, but you don't know really how often or how deeply they read it. And I'm working with a couple of guys right now who've been, one guy's been following my posts for many, many years. I won't tell you how many. And if you want to talk about a world's longest sales cycle, it's a lot of years. But he bought because he called me up and he said, I'm now ready. Somebody made a comment to me. I took it to heart. I think I need your help on LinkedIn. I didn't think I needed it before. I just read what you tell us to do because I'm the teacher, but that's okay. Now I need you to really hold my hand and do it. Okay, I'll take that because everybody is ready at a different time. And that's not going to keep me from talking about what I think people need to know. I think that's great. And the content really allows you to stay top of mind so that when the timing might not be right now, but when it is, it's not even a question of who I'm going to go to. It's just, you know, I'm going to pick up the phone and call them. Yeah. And um, I think that nurturing and just dropping, whether it's a, you know, a LinkedIn or post or a newsletter that you're just, you know, you're helping them get to that, um, that point when it's right for them. You know, it's important to see how many people read, or you, you actually don't know how many people are reading your, your content, but what metrics should we be looking for if you're posting something? Is it likes? Is it views? Like what, what is important here? This is the vanity part of us we're trying to uncover. <laughs> It's comments. It's comments. If people don't comment, it's not worth their while. And I always say anybody can like, and it's like a it's like a drive-by shooting. It happens so fast you don't even know what happened. A like is so lame. People don't like stuff. Don't give the little clappy hands kudos or the little uh, whatever. I, I don't even focus on them anymore. They just drive me crazy. It, it, talk about it. Give a bravo or a brava. Somebody gets a new job, brava. Karen, they're so fortunate to have you. It's all you have to say, and it imparts this appreciation you have for that person, and they feel great. That's giving more than you're getting. If they like your article, go back to them and say, hey, why did you like it? What did I say that resonated with you? And if they won't say it, find somebody else who will. All right. I'm not saying beg for a lot for reasons they like it, but I always ask at the end of every post, does this make sense to you? Is this something that you can relate to? Do you have a story about this? Is this something that means something in your world? Please tell us why. And it's always about the why. And do I get a lot of comments? I know when I've hit a home run, when I get a lot of comments. And how many comments is a lot of comments? I'll take anything over two because people are so lazy and so attention deficit right now that they just think that a, a kudo or a, ha a happy face is something that means something. So when they come to 10 and 20 and 100, record is like 400, I knew I hit a really bad, big slam. 
that was great. Doesn't happen the first day. It sort of rolls like the ocean. It sort of comes and goes and comes and goes. People share it with other people. Uh, and it's fascinating to see who comes and makes a comment. Yeah, I think that's a great way to test your message and your against your target market as well. But I see so often, you know, like tons of like hundreds of likes and like two comments. And I just think you talk about a, a pattern interrupt or a differentiator. If you write something there, you'll see 50 people have checked out your profile because you wrote something yeah. insightful. And it, I just find it's hiding behind something. Like if I'm just going to like something, I'm not going to do it because it. What, like you said, what did I like about it? What did I take away from it? Or what do I want to understand a little bit more? But be different, be thought provoking. To like it is just playing it safe. And even LinkedIn makes it easier when someone says, you know, Mark's got an anniversary and it's you pre-populated. Congratulations. I'll always yes. add something so that they know I didn't take the free version, the free click. I just thought, you know what, like I'll even an exclamation or an emoji, but letting them know there was a little bit of intentionality behind well, that's it. That's why we get know? along so well, because we believe that. But other people are just so lame about it. It's just amazing. Well, I gave you a like. What else did you want? Like, what? Really? It took you one tenth of a nanosecond to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I say keep it. I don't want your like. Let me know what you liked so that I know where to go and you know keep me on the path. Am I going right or am I going to go left? A like doesn't tell me where to go. I just know that that you know you need some validation as to what what you liked about it. Well, your content is only as good as the people who believe and understand it. And you're never going to know unless you get the applause back from the audience that you're saying something. So like, we're all actors on the world stage right now. If there's, if you make a joke or if you make a, a, you do a great scene in a play and there's silence, you don't know what the hell to do. You're expecting at least a reaction. We need the reaction because we are all vulnerable. We want to know we're addressing a need in our audience. We have different audiences at different times on different subjects. Find the way to address them. Yeah. Yeah. Lot, lots of great stuff here, Mark. I love that the, the, you know, leading with the heart and understanding your why is that common thread throughout it all. And just really the impact it has in connecting in, a, in an authentic yet vulnerable way. I want to just start ending here with just getting tactical and really some, uh, a few, if you want to share some things that we may not know about that are new to LinkedIn, um, you know, is there anything new feature wise that we uh, as salespeople should be aware of? Well, you can search out in a company, the people you are first level connected to. And I don't know how people know that you go up to your search bar on the, on LinkedIn, type in the name of the company, click the company's little bar underneath that. And then a box opens up on the right side of the screen and find the first level connections that you know at that company. If you're looking to make inroads to a company, no better group to do it with than your first level connection there. They may not be in the right department or might not know the right person, but they know somebody who knows the right person that gets you in front of them. Um, there's a lot of quickie little videos going on on the app version of LinkedIn um, stories, as they're called. Um, I'm not a fan, so I mean, I'm going to I'm going to be jaundiced here. They only last for 24 hours. I don't do stories for 24 hours. I'd rather be more indelible. I'd rather have a bigger impact. Um, I, I, I don't know where they're going. They, the groups are basically broken. They don't work well. If you're in a group and it's a great group, you should congratulate the manager of the group because that is a job that no one wants. And if they're doing well in the group and you're doing well in the group, the manager is managing a group well. That's really hard stuff. So I hope that they're going to wholesale rework groups yet again, again, again. I mean, if you think of the years I've been in, it's been four or five times. I'd like to see them do that. There are funny things happening on LinkedIn. You'll notice that LinkedIn or a section of LinkedIn disappears for an hour or two or three or a day. I had somebody panic me yes, yesterday. She goes, ah, I, I can't get something to do on LinkedIn. It won't work. I think I broke it. Well, A, you didn't break it. Don't worry. But B, it's probably being worked on by the little gremlins who like to work in the background. So wait till tomorrow. Go back in in the morning. And in fact, this morning she called me. She said, hey, it works. You were exactly right. So don't, don't worry. All right. It's 
hard to use. They make it harder and harder to use all the time. That is not to say that you should not use LinkedIn because once you learn it now, everything they add that's a little bit harder every day will be easier to absorb into your routine. It is a Microsoft product. I love Microsoft. I've been on Microsoft all my career, but Word and PowerPoint and Excel were once foreign languages to you. Now you plop down and you whip off one of those products and you, you know exactly what to do. They change it, you absorb the change. It's just like LinkedIn. So it's the only game in town. It's the big gorilla. It is not Clubhouse. It is not alignable. It is not, it's still 740 million people. You know, they grew 20 million people in two months. That's a gigantic growth. Why? Because we're so isolated in the pandemic. We need to reach out to other people to either validate us, appreciate us, or try us. If you can get all three, you've done something right. 20, min- 20 million in two months. That's crazy. And that just, you know, kind of to bring us full circle where we started is people are trying to break through the noise. They're trying to, you know, connect with their audience, be vulnerable, understand their why, and really bring it into that uh, engagement and, and also help them stand out. So there's some emotional connection and purpose. And, and I think that's that stands out because otherwise, with when you say what you do, you're instantly pushed into a commodity and you're no different, you know, in your customer's eyes than someone else that does the same thing as you. But when you can inject some emotion and some personality, there's some there's some relevance and there's some relatability. And I, and I feel that really helps to connect. I, I agree with you. And to that point, do not attempt to connect to somebody and sell them in the same message. That I see over and over. And I know nobody in this audience ever does that. So I won't even go further than that. I've learned to use the disconnect button very quickly when that happens. Um, it's normally exactly. not in and, the same and, one. It's that connect and then boom, there's that spam immediately. And I'm like, oh, you!" I look at the title and I'm like, I know I'm going to get that. <laughs> and I get it and I delete. <laughs> Yeah, well, there's another scourge going on, and it's a lot of bots that are posing as people. And I have been approached by every single hairdresser in Ghana at this point. And I, look at me. I don't need a hairdresser. So you know what? And when they start the message, hi, handsome, how are you tonight? Uh, you know what? And so that is not ignore. That is report. And do not be afraid to report people like this because the only way we can contain the hairdressers, the Bitcoin operators, all these guys that are just making noise and spam is to report them and LinkedIn will eventually eradicate them. It has to happen. Yeah, that's that's a good point. I haven't gotten any of those yet, but um, no, you're lucky. Uh, <laughs> anyway, listen, Mark, you've been such a wealth of knowledge from just really understanding your why. I think, as you mentioned, it's not a one and done. Like as we go through stages of life, triggers, a pandemic, we really need to search and get deep and get vulnerable as to why we do what we do, because only then are we able to connect with others and perhaps allow them to share why they do what they do. So I, I couldn't say it better. I think that's Great. that's really wonderful and deep. And um, I love the tactical bits that you know people need to be aware of. Like LinkedIn, seven hundred forty million people and twenty million growth in two months. That's crazy. Like it's it's not going anywhere. So it even drives the point even more that it's it's professional. You have to play the long game. You know, you have to give more than you receive. All these things that kind of should be innate to who you are as a person anyways. You're not adopting a persona, a LinkedIn persona. This is who you are. So I want to ask you, if people now listening to this, salespeople are looking to say, you know what, after hearing this, I realize there's some room for improvement here um, to really elevate my profile and start getting some game-changing results. Is there three things that you you could suggest that they would, could start doing immediately to do that? Well, yeah, but I'll, I'll make four if I can. I'm just going to don't please don't ask me to connect with you if I haven't met you and do business with you. After every single podcast, after every single blog post, there's always somebody that wants to connect with me. I only do that as a privilege to the people I have vetted and gotten to know through business. Okay, so that number one, first thing you need to do, you need to take a thirty thousand foot view of your LinkedIn profile and ask yourself, would I buy from me? If you would say no, you got a problem. You got to fix it. Okay. You have to rewrite it. You have to tear the house down to the bolt, to the, to the studs and redecorate the house. That's hard. I get that. You have to use content. You have to be visible. 
You have to ping on people's mental radar screens by being out there. So if they're at a cocktail party, if we ever go back to that type of thing, or if somebody's saying, I need a referral for somebody who does sales, offers this, that, or the other, you've got to be top of mind. The only reason you get top of mind is if you're in front of their face every single week or day as I've chosen, but it's just not quantity. It's quality. Quality makes the quantity. If you have multiple things to say in a day and they're quality, say them. If you have nothing to say tomorrow, that's okay too, at least once a week. And finally, leverage your second level connections. So I could work with Karen, since we're already connected on LinkedIn, I would say to Karen, Karen, of the people you're connected to that I don't know, those are my second level connections, who could you refer me to? Who of, what podcasters do you know, because I love doing podcasts, that you could refer me to? What people or companies or law firms or accounting firms that you know of in the Toronto area would love for me to teach them remotely? Because that's what I do. You hear the quality, the passion of what I do. Could you refer me? Never be reticent to ask for help. Ask the first level connection to refer you on to their connections you don't know. That's the warmest type of referral. It works like a dream every single time. And if they say no, move on. No problem. Find another person because you probably got a lot of other people who can help you as well. So don't get, don't get inwardly focused. Oh, I'm not as any good. I know I'm good, but the, the, she doesn't get me. Just keep going. You will find it. It will happen and it will work and pay off in spades for you. I love that. So just if I can recap, the first one was um, evaluate your profile, really look at it, you know, and say, would you buy from you? Uh, The second one is content, really make yourself visible. Um, Be top of mind. So the quality of the content is going to drive the quantity to look at both of them. And then finally, leverage your second degree connections. And, um, you know, knowing you, Mark, and knowing what you stand for, knowing your why, you know, if you were to ask me to refer you, you know, I would have no problem. I I think it's, you know, there's the, the right time. And when the relationship is at a point that it becomes um, without a question that you would do that. So I think there's a bit of a finessing there too. Um, But I think those are all really great points. And I hope um, the listeners take those into, um, into practice and really, you know, look at your profile and, and, and maybe not even you, maybe get someone else. Cause sometimes we're too attached to what we put in the emotional connection to the words we put down. So maybe get someone else and take a 30,000 view and say, Mm, this is a little bit, you know, off or self-serving or whatever it is, but I still think you have to evaluate it as if you were looking out through the eyes of your customers. Exactly. And I would say vice versa, if you need to meet somebody in my second level group, I'd, in a heartbeat, I would introduce you. So it goes two ways. Awesome. Awesome. Well, listen, thank you again for sharing your insights on LinkedIn and how important it is to really understand our why and leverage it to really engage with our customers and create authentic experiences for them. So thanks everybody for tuning in. Take care. Thank you.